Hey, you guys. Moving my table over. Getting my morning cup of awesome English breakfast tea. How is everybody? Good morning. Let me get it shared. How are ya? How are you? Good morning. Let me know your city and state. Let me get this shared. Sharing it to my personal page. me a bit to go down here. Hey, I see Gloria and Linda. Hey, you guys. There we go. Okay. I'm trying to get it shared. Hey, Terry. Hey, Wardell. I see North Carolina and Pennsylvania on here. Hey, Charlie. Hey, darling. Jesus is so wonderful. Hey, Alicia. Okay, I'm telling you what to do. Please do it. Okay. I guess I don't know what is going on with that. I think it's letting me do it now. There we go. Okay, it did it. Halifax, North Carolina. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm coming to you from Bristol, Tennessee in the prayer house. Yay! This is one of my flags. This is the Israel flag. I love it. It hangs down here. We have our Jerusalem flag over there at the keyboard. I've hit the back button. Go where you're supposed to go. I should be done now. Okay, finish. Yay! Okay. Uh, how weird! Okay. I will just close that window out. I don't know what's going on with that. Okay, I, this is an Android. I don't know how to use an Android. It's an old phone and it's Android. Oh, Terry, your son is from Knoxville. Hey, I see Apostle Rusty Pleasant's on here. Long Island. I love that song too. Good morning, pretty. I'm not gonna be shaken. We're building our life upon his love. I see Radonna on here. Hey there. I am actually doing a video um, with Pastor Jamie Jackson um, on, I'll have to look at the calendar. It's this weekend. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a blast. Um, that's either Friday or Saturday. I don't have my book in front of me. I have like 1,384 things going on this week. But that is going to be so much fun. I can't wait for that. They are the River Church. Is it the River? I don't think so. I don't think I got that right. 
They are in uh, Brunswick, Darien, Georgia area. Radonna's gonna have to correct me on this. Ah. I think the name, uh, it starts with a different word. They have an awesome church. I have been there. It's beautiful. Beautiful place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's a There's a pressing going on and the oil is coming out. It's the good oil. I see Gino and Samantha on here. Hello and blessing. He can have it all. Come on, he can have it all. I want to tell somebody this morning, you keep being told by people you're being rebellious, you're in the wrong, you're sinning, or something isn't appropriate in your life. But you know because you have got it right with the Lord and you are doing what he's asked you to do that you're not in the wrong. I'm not talking about rebellious, going against some type of church authority uh, type messed up stuff. I'm talking about people who are just doing what God has told them to do and then other people are coming in saying no, that's not how you do it. That's not how it's done. If that's what God has told you to do, you know what? Go and do that thing. Go and do it. Go and do it. Be at peace. God is literally Resurrecting dead places. He is doing a pressing. But any kind of pressing done by people that's inappropriate, God is remedying that. He's rectifying that. He's literally going up against what has come up against you. You know, there's a verse. We're going to look it up. Um, it. I'm wiping up some tea here I spilt. Probably the tea I spilt from yesterday when it went all over my notes. That was fun. I do three I either did three or four live streams yesterday we have been busy I just want to tell you busy 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 in Jesus um but I want to look this up I think I'm gonna set this in my lap because um I probably should have put that over there but anyway I'm doing it this way hey you guys amen let the Holy Spirit lead but there is a verse that literally talks about in the Bible those that bless Israel are blessed and those that curse Israel are cursed. Now, we operate in love. I want you to hear me on that. Okay? I do want you to hear me on that. Numbers 24, 9. This is what it says. So, I want you to picture yourself. Remember, we are Israel. Let me, I guess I should go to this other verse first before we read this one. We live for the Lord. We're just living for the Lord. Turning that down. This is build my life by house fires. Build my life by house fires. I'm going to take it off repeat. Hopefully it will go to the next song. Normally the playlist is not blank. Okay. Uh, but there's another one. It's in the New Testament. And it tells us if we are in Christ, then we are Abraham's seed. I have tons of scripture memorized. It's just praise the Lord for Google because I really, you know, I know it's in the New Testament, but Google lets me know exactly where. So Galatians, if you are slightly um, verse, chapter and verse deficient, <laughs> that you have word, but you need to know where it came from then Google is going to be your best friend. It's your bestie. Um, so Galatians 3.29. If you, uh, if, 
Come on now, what are you doing, computer? I'm clicking it. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That means you've been grafted into Israel. When those other branches were broken off, you, the wild olive tree, the wild olive branches were grafted in, and now we too are a part of Israel. People oftentimes will see this flag and get upset. They'll see that star and get upset. They'll see the flag of Jerusalem and get upset. They'll come in contact with me sometimes and get upset. I mention Israel. Some of you right now, your skin's crawling and you want to know why. Because the enemy can't stand Israel. But that's who you are. Recognize who you are, where you came from. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's go back over here. Since you're Israel, these are some of the things you know that are going to happen. God's going to vindicate you. In Numbers 24 and 9, it says, The nation is like a mighty lion. When it is sleeping, no one dares wake it. Whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. Whoever curses Israel is cursed. Come on. Let's go on down to another one. Genesis 49 and 9. Judah is like a lion. You're considered Judah now. Killing his victim and returning to his den. Stretching out and lying down. No one dares disturb him. That's got a, along the same lines to do with that. Uh, God is the Lion of Judah. Jesus is that Lion of Judah who is protecting you. Come on. He will rend what came to rend you. And it's not a person. It's a spirit. It's a particular spirit. It's called sabotage, hate, murder, whatever. And I'm just going to be real. Hey, Pam. People can't stand Israel. You know, I want to say that in the past. We're going to, you know, we can decree and declare, especially if you are Jewish, we're going, to, we're going to decree and declare that people love you. God causes and turns their hearts to favor you. Just as Nehemiah was favored with the king, so too you are favored in this season, in Jesus' name. I had relatives. Um, my grandfather's parents were in the camps, the uh, concentration camps. So they survived. So that's a part of my heritage. What's a part of your heritage? In this season, so many people want vindicated. You want love done. You want this. You want that. All those things are true. He also asks us to walk in love. Now, we've been doing a revelation study. If you need to love people more, read 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. It'll take you about 25 minutes probably, maybe uh, less. And the whole time you read it, because I know that's how it happens with me. I read it a lot. The whole time I read it, God is convicting me over and over and over again about various things. Um, it could be stuff I've done, or a lot of times I'll bring what they did. And he is like, well, great. I see what they did, but, you know, I'm dealing with you. I'll deal with them about their stuff, but I want to talk to you about your stuff. So, I see how this made you feel. I see like you wanted to pick them up and chuck them out a window. You wanted to pick them up and put them under the car and run them over and then back up on them and run over them again. Come on, that's the spirit of murder. And if that's in your heart, just admit it to the Lord. Come on, admit it to God and move on. So, we're, I'm going to put this over here now and we're going to get into Revelation. We are in chapter 2. We did the Revelation study. It took us about a year, year and a half to get through it. But the last time we started in Revelation, I think chapter 4 or 5, and went from there. My favorite chapters in the book of Revelation are Revelation chapters 11 through 13, uh, or maybe 15 or 16. I, and Revelation chapter 11 and 12, those are my most favorite right now, out of just like anything and everything that God has written. Um, and every time I say that, then I read something else, and it's my favorite. But you know how that is. So right now, I'm going to turn this music down. And I want to get started in Revelation chapter 2. I always turn this into a now word. When I read this scripture, it's prophetic. But how can it help you today when you're on your job with those co-workers? When you are at the grocery store? When you are working with your mother-in-law? Come on. Maybe you're sitting across the table from your relatives. How is this book going to be relevant to you today? Because it's got to be relevant to you today. Or what's the point? Come on. It's just historical writings or future events Unless it makes uh, sense today. And so all scripture is prophetic. Holy Spirit is infused all in it. It's alive. Come on. So this scripture 
it being alive, I'm just telling you right now, this stuff literally has a now word in it for you today. You don't have to wait till you're uh, dead to see the revelation of it. You don't have to wait till you are 90. You don't have to wait till your grandkids and great grandkids are here. You can use this now. So if we're going to look right here, and I want, when we read this today, these are the letters to the churches. I don't want you to feel condemned. Okay? I don't want you to feel condemned. What I do want you to feel is God's love for you. And just look at this, and we're going to do like a quick assessment. It's almost like we do an assessment of our life. Because if we read this, and then you think of other people. Well, fine, they may have done some stuff, but God is dealing with us about us. Let him deal with them about them. Okay? Now, in chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, to the angel of the church of Ephesus write. So, Jesus, these are words in red. Jesus is speaking, and he's talking to John the Revelator. We call him that, John the Revelator. It, this whole book is about the revelation of Jesus Christ. How he had Jesus, how Jesus revealed himself to, not only to John, but even to the churches. Now, on some level, all churches that exist, because we're one church, one bride, right? But as you can see, we can't all be in the same place because the globe is a huge place. So we all have our individual parts, within the church that make up the big church. But we may call that building down the road, that one on that corner, that one on that corner, that in so-and-so's home, that one at the prayer house. Come on. Those are churches. We call them a church. But really, it's a segment or a part of a larger thing called the church. So all churches on some level are going to fall more within some of these categories or you could assess your own self and realize, wow, I kind of have that in common with that church. Wow, I kind of have that in common with that one. I have that in common with that one. Oh, must we go on? Thank you for typing that out, Vincent. I appreciate that. Invite some people. Share this. Let them know we're on here. Now, in chapter 2, again, they're writing to the one in Ephesus. And he's writing to the angel of that church. When we write, here's a key concept. When God tells you to write your dreams and visions down, when you're writing your uh, journal, when you are uh, spending time with God and you're writing, it says you're writing to what? Angels. When you write a decree down, when you decree out of your mouth, who runs with it? If it's demonic, the demons are going to run with it. If it is uh, the kingdom of God purposes, if it is authored by Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, Father God, then the angels are running with it. That's why it's important to write your visions down. Make a goal for your family. Write that vision down. Write this stuff down. Because your family is going to be what? Insured to get across the finish line because angels are taking that vision and that word that God's given you, that promise, and they are running with it. They are running with it to make certain that it is performed. Now, these things says, he who holds seven stars in his right hand. He's got the seven stars in his right hand. That's Jesus. Okay? Those, hey, Raymond, y'all pray for Raymond. Continue praying for him. Um, he just came through both surgeries. He had the one for the um, thyroid he had the one for the back, and they found the thyroid thing based on basically because the ribs and the back. His back was broken in a couple of places in the, in the ribs, and so they did the uh, the thyroid, the back surgery, all that. They, they've gotten that. So now he's on the recuperation end after that uh, accident, and so we just say he is speedily cured right now in Jesus' name. Father God, we even ask you for a miracle just so you will show yourself great and mighty through this in Jesus' name. You know, I love to tell people to get up off their mat and walk. Get up off the bed and walk. Um, so, Father God, we just thank you right now that strength is infusing Raymond. Strength is infusing him right now in Jesus' name. And there's already been such rapid recovery, the doctors are astounded. 
Um, he was supposed to be in the ICU longer. He was supposed to have the breathing tube in for more days and all, things like that. And then as soon as he came out of the surgery, they didn't have to use a breathing tube. So that in itself, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. So y'all, please keep praying for him. And we love you, Raymond. Bless you. Bless you. Hey, uh, who is that? Jared and Elena. So this is Jesus holding the seven stars. That's the seven. It can represent the seven churches. It can also represent the seven spirits of the Lord. Um, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. So the seven stars can be the churches, the church. Seven is the perfected number. That's perfect. The perfect number. It doesn't necessarily mean seven literal. Because all of us are going to fall somewhere in this. And then the uh, seven golden lampstands. Okay, that can represent that light that's gone out into all the earth. Many different people will interpret this differently. But what is God saying to you today about it? Because we're talking about right here, right now. You're the light that is in the world. The Lord says so in the word. We are the light in the world. He has set us on a hill. Don't hide your light under a bushel. Come on. Verse 2. I know your works, your labor, your patience. So they have works. They have some labor that they've done, and they are patient. And that you cannot bear those who are evil. Okay. Wow, that sounds good. I think. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. Let's look at that word, testing of apostles. What does it say that they, uh, to, uh, for an apostle, there has to be signs, wonders, and miracles that follow them? If signs, wonders, and miracles do not follow everywhere that apostle goes, they are not an apostle. They have to be manifesting Holy Spirit. They can't just be teaching and preaching because if there's no uh, rain in those clouds. Come on, the Bible says, and there's other places in the Bible where it talks about um, there are those who preach and teach, but they have no what? They, there's no rain in their clouds. Uh, they don't manifest Holy Spirit. And we're told to avoid people like that because that would be a dead church. That'd be a dead thing. Well, it says right here, they tested those ones and they found them to be liars. So they are people who are trying to keep the body of Christ pure. That uh, They're trying to uh, make certain there's no error in the, uh, in the bride. Okay. And in uh, verse 3 it says, And you have persevered and have patience. Well, God has mentioned patience twice with them. And have labored for my name's sake. Now he's mentioned labored twice. Patience, they're very patient, evidently, and they've labored, okay? And have not become weary. God has given them strength. God is giving you strength today. He's keeping you patient. How does that happen through trials and perseverance? You persevere through trials. That brings patience. So these people had trials and they persevered through trials because that's where patience comes from, okay? That's where patience comes from. And they have labored for the sake of the Lord. And they didn't become weary because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hello, Raphaela. Holy Spirit says that he'll renew us. Come on. Like he'll renew our youth like that of an eagle. He'll cause us to rise up, to run and not grow weary. Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Oh, no. Have you ever got so busy doing the Lord's work that you are doing something that is good, that maybe even God asked you to, but come on, you didn't spend the time that you needed to in the worship, in the praise, in the praying, in, to be, in being with the Lord? Come on, I can say that's happened to me before. I'm wearing this Emergence University shirt. Can you see that? The EU, Emergence University, EU. Um, thank you, Angie, for sending this out. Why am I showing you this shirt right now? Well, it's a university. It takes a lot to run it and everything and everyone and all the stuff, the office stuff with it, everything. Everything that is going on. It takes a lot of time. But see, it's it wouldn't be anything if the presence of God isn't there, people would just be what? Learning a bunch of stuff. There'd be a lot of works and a lot of labor, maybe even a lot of patience. There wouldn't be evil. But 
we would what? Have left our first love. So even in the busyness of this, I have to stay prayed up, loving on the Lord, let him love me, spend time with him, okay? Because I don't want to be, I don't want when it's all said and done that I left my first love. I don't want when it's all said and done, well, they did a great work, but they weren't loving. Well, they did a great work, but they were rude and crude. Well, they did a great work, but, you know, they got a lot done. A lot of people got saved, but there was no love there. Ooh. Ew. You know, I don't want that. I'm going to look at this comment right here. Oh, I love that. Isaiah 40, 28. Through 41 and 1. I love that. Vincent put that verse on there about increases our strength. Thank you so much for putting that on there. So, what are you doing today? And is it pulling you away from God? Is it something you need to pull back from? Is it something that has to be done? I can remember when my children were little, I said, Lord, this is keeping me from loving you. I certainly wanted the children. But it wasn't keeping me from loving him because I don't know if you've heard this before because God came to me and this is what he said. He says, as you love them, you are loving on me. You're loving. I'm loving them through you. You're doing what I asked you to do. And I'm right here with you. You have to find me in every moment of your day. So for some of you, you're working 40, 60 hours a week, but you can't do less, especially if you're a single parent, because you have to have that to survive. So you're not homeless. Okay. Okay. I get that. So you have to find in every moment in your break, as you're doing the monotony, maybe you have a plant job, maybe this, maybe that, whatever it is you're doing, maybe you're driving, and just take those moments in those moments and go back and forth with the Lord. Because I can foster that relationship no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing. No matter. Now verse 5. Revelation 2 and 5 says, Remember from where you fail, repent and do the first works. Or I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. What is that? That basically means if God has us doing something, but in the doing of it, we don't keep to our first love. We don't keep... Um, in his presence, with his uh, fellowship with him. If it's destroying us, if it's leading us away from him, it doesn't always have to be something sinful like alcohol, drugs, sexual activity. Come on. It could be just doing a good thing that takes you away from the Lord. And so what will happen? When he says, remove your lampstand from its place. Now, this is talking to churches, but what could that mean to us as individuals, people? What could that mean? That means he's going to take anything out of our life that's going to take us away from him. If you have a buku of money and it's going to take you oh, into sin, into doing evil, and you're going to leave God, you know, he, he's going he's gonna, to um, only give you the amount of money that you can steward and it not lead you into sin. You know, you got to think about that. Or sometimes people are like, I want that job. I want that promotion. I want this. I want that. But if you did, you would never be home with your family. Or if you did, you know, they spend all their time in Las Vegas. And God knows if you got that job, you'd, you'd what? You'd go off into sin. Come on. You weren't able to hardly steward $200. He can't give you $2 billion or $2 million. I hope that's making sense. So this could refer to that lamp stand in this instance could mean anything that would take us away from God. He'll either keep us from walking through a door that's going to pervert us or he will uh, keep us from um, getting something or he'll test us and he'll let us know. When, when God tests us, see, God already knows what's in our heart. The test is not for us. Pardon, the test is not for him to see. God already knows. The test is for us to see what God already knows. The test is to bring us up higher so that we don't go around the mountain again. But sometimes people go through the test and they get mad at God um, instead of realizing, oh, you're right. That is so terrible. I'm so sorry. 
Now, it's really nice when you go through the test and you pass the test and God shows you that as well. Now, verse 6, we just read that. And it says, unless you repent. So there may be things that we can look at in our lives and go, well, that's taking up way too much of my time. Or that is what, you know, this, that, that, this. But it depends on your season as well. When it comes to doing things, as long as you're having your personal time in each and every moment, it doesn't matter how jam-packed your schedule is. Hear me. You, in every moment of all the doing, even if you're scheduled from sunup to sundown, okay, you can do this with the Lord all day long, all throughout the day, getting those moments in with the Lord. Because he's supposed to be doing it with you. You're doing it with him. Okay? And I can remember there's times where I miss God so bad, especially when I had the cleaning business. I would take two or three days off and shut the internet down. I would shut everything out. Everybody and everything and just be all up in my condo. Just swirling around. In worship with the Lord. Because I needed that. I had to have that. Now, I still have to have time and presence with the Lord. But uh, now, I oftentimes, um, that's with me all the time in all that I do. That anointing is right there on me. It's a little different now. But it's still a very beautiful thing. Now, in verse 6, it says, But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now, you can hate the works that someone is doing. They hated the deeds. It didn't say, he did not say, but this you have, that you hate the Nicolaitans. Come on. What could we put in there? This you have, that you hate the deeds of witches and warlocks. You hate the deeds of sinners, of uh, people who are doing, you know, harmful things to children. You know, you can hate the deed, but it doesn't say hate the people. So we can't say that you hate the witches and warlocks because that's not what it says here. It says the deeds of, the works of. Your coworker, you might not like them. You know what? You have to love them. We're called to love them. You have to. But you get to choose if you have to or not. And if you don't, then there's going to be issues. But you don't have to like anything they're doing. Nor do you have to tolerate it. And you can hate the deeds that they're doing. Okay? Verse 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one that overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life. This overcoming right here. When I read this as a teenager, I kept thinking, God in heaven, the one who overcomes, that must be when we're dead and we're going to get to eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And he told me this, even as a teenager, he said, no, that you don't wait till you're dead to overcome. That's when you stand, having done all to stand, you stand regardless of what may and what come, you stand knowing that God has you whether you live or die. He has you and you're okay with that and you come out on the other side of it. That's called the overcomer. Come on. The three that were thrown into the fiery furnace. Overcomers. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Overcomers. Come on. On here. Somebody went through a divorce court situation but you're not still there. You went through it. You came out on the other side. Called, that's called overcomer. You stood your ground. Maybe you had a season of homelessness, but you're not still there. Hopefully it was just a day or two. You know what I'm saying? But you have overcome. You have overcome. Thank you, Jesus. And it says that God will give you to eat from the tree of life. The Bible calls our tongues a tree of life. The Bible calls us a tree of life. You are a tree of life. How do you become that way? Which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Again, look back at the verse here that says, that talks about leaving the first love, Revelation 2 and 4. He's our first love. If you are spending time with God, then you are in the midst of the paradise of God. The midst is in the very center, in the middle of his presence, in the glory realms itself. You not only will eat 
from the tree of life who Jesus is. The spirit is the life. He gives life to even your mortal flesh. Romans 8, 11. But then you become a tree of life when you decide to overcome. People say, no, no, no. Overcoming is a set of circumstances. I don't know if I'm going to overcome. No, overcoming is a choice. You choose if you're going to be an overcomer. You don't know the end from the beginning unless God tells you. But God does. Overcoming is a choice, not knowing necessarily the end. Or maybe you know the very end, but you don't know the steps in between. And you go, I don't see how I'm going to get there. I don't see how I'm going to overcome. You're an overcomer if you just choose to continue. That is the overcomer. And so an overcomer is one who then gets to eat from the tree of life. Because as you worship the Lord, he is that tree of life. He creates in you that new man. Come on, you become the new creature. You're already transformed. You died with Christ and he resurrected you to life. You are now a tree of life. And that's why other people will come to you and ask many of you. You are like, why are these people asking my advice? Who am I that anybody would want to ask my advice? That anybody would even want to talk to me about anything. Why are they asking my opinion? Because they know something's different about you. You're different. They can recognize the spirit of wisdom on you, of understanding and of knowledge. It's the knowledge not of the world, but of some other thing. You have strategies. People will ask you something and you're like, Okay, wait a minute. How come, Lord, for my own life, I have to hound heaven. I have to get in there and pray, 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 and ask you and, and spend so much time to get this like to get up in your face to get a strategy for me. But somebody walks by me and I automatically know. Because that's how that works. That's how that works. We have to pursue God. We have to. Good morning, Cynthia. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Samantha and Rachel. We have to pursue God. And he will cause us to not know everything on purpose so we can pursue him for the mystery to be revealed. All the hidden things will be revealed. That can have two meanings. Everything done in secret is going to be revealed. Even the things of God. Come on. Even the things of God. God hid it in the secret place and you get the privilege of him revealing it to you if you pursue him. Imagine if I've cooked supper for my kids. Now I made my children come to the table when they were little. You know what I'm saying. But suppose it's a grown child or your neighbors and you said, hey, we're having a cookout. It's awesome. It's beautiful. It's this huge spread. They get to choose if they come to the table or not. Come on. They get to choose. So you get to choose whether or not you're going to be at the table with the Lord, whether you're going to find the hidden mysteries of God, whether you're going to pursue him for the answer. He made it. It's a beautiful plate of food, but he put the lid on it. It's almost like if you were at an outside barbecue, they've cooked all the food and they put lids on it so the flies won't get to it. Come on, God hid it so the devil wouldn't find it. He hid it so you can find it. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to unveil it to uh dig it out to find it god hides hides it and it's your glory when you find it it'll be revealed to you if you pursue the lord he hid it for you and not from you now we're gonna stop there today i have um yeah, I got a couple of, uh, we need to get in prayer requests because I have a couple of phone calls I have going on today. And then, um, I've got to look at the classes. I think, I was thinking one of them we already did, but I've got to look. Um, the finance class and the relationship class is, um, the last class on those are going on today. I'm thinking one of them, let's see if I can look real quick, if it'll let me look. I can figure out how to use this Android and get to the uh, Facebook on it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord, for help. He's so good. You know, he sends help when we need it. Oh, well, that's not the right one. How did I go there? Hmm. Okay, I'm looking for level seven and eight, so I'm gonna have to type that in, go back, type in the number seven. 
hit search. I wanted to tell y'all because in case you wanted to preview a class, but I don't want to invite you to preview a class. And we already have finished it. I think, um, let's see. Okay. Okay, it is uh, this week for the finance class. It is actually a replay uh, financial video. It's a um, it's going to be a watch party. I'm going to go live in the class, and then I'm going to start the watch party in the class for a financial segment that um, some of you may have already seen or you may not have. Let's look on level eight real quick because sometimes people like to be added in just to preview a class to see if they'd want to take the university or not these last end classes they don't consist of homework they don't it's like a wrapping up of stuff you don't really um there's not a lot of participation because it's the the end our graduation is in june every year oh my goodness applying for a job we just decree and declare right now that that job is for you right now in jesus name 4 p.m eastern for the relationship class thank you pam that's so true um okay Ooh, I need to label that one. Okay. So at 2 p.m. Eastern today and 4 p.m. Eastern today um, are those classes. If you want to preview that last class or whatever um, and kind of, you know, you kind of can scroll around the group, kind of see how the layout is or whatnot, um, ask to be put in there. Um, you're welcome to sew as well if you'd like. Um, and then after, as soon as the class is over, we're, we remove you. Okay, we will remove you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, but in June, at the graduations, that's when we always have the activations, impartations. Um, if you've already taken, uh, like, if you've already taken, like, say, four levels, two to four levels, depending on um, if you're already a pastor or a minister. Oftentimes, we'll either certify, license, or ordain. If you're already a minister, we, we do ordination. Um, and depending on what your ministry is, sometimes we don't make you go through the school. Um, there are people I've done ministry with, and we ordained them because they already have their own ministry. They're, they're already in line in doing the things of the Lord, and they're already set up and stuff like that. They have excellent character, etc. And then, obviously, if we don't know you, then we need to make a rapport with you and um, get to know you, that kind of thing. Oh, you think that would help? Well, Rachel, I will tell you this, that relationship class, um, it definitely will challenge you. It definitely will challenge you because that thing will challenge anybody um, because it's one thing for me to sit there and tell you what you should say, what you should do, what you can do in that situation. But people have free will. Good morning, Kimberly. People have free will. And so what works in one situation may not work in another. Or it may work and then the person just decide to put on you. Okay. Or uh, you're praying, praying, praying. And nothing seems to work. But a lot of times this will give you skills to where suddenly things are much easier, more manageable. You'll recognize errors of your past. And you might think, well, why do I need to recognize in the past what's wrong? I need to fix what's now or in the future. Um, because once you recognize the past issues, you realize, wow, wow, that's why that happened. Oh, my goodness. So, it's, it's just very life-changing, life-altering things. Very much so. We do, Bridget. I do. I do discuss passive-aggressive behavior. But I also don't get a lot into the psychology of it. We get a little bit into that. Um, but we stay more in the line of um, putting the responsibility back on your own self and not the person. 
Yes, recognizing certain behaviors in people can help you realize, like, for instance, if people are passive aggressive, I oftentimes put them immediately way out in left field somewhere um, because they're more dangerous than an individual who gets in your face. Okay? Um, but it's just that kind of stuff. It's A lot of it is common sense. There are some books that um, we recommend. No one has to purchase the recommended books. But we do have them listed in the curriculum. We have the first four levels have workbooks. You can find them on Amazon. You can uh, Google Tiffany Blackwell, Emergence, CE, Emergence University. And, um, and um, purchase the one for the level you want to take. We've got those four foundational levels. And the last, the other four are the... Um, Function, I call it functioning levels, such as the evangelism, the uh, relationships, finances, and publisher story. Everybody's got a story. And that was such a good class yesterday. I just want to thank our special guest. Thank you so much. She did an excellent job. And may y'all, um, Dawn Brown, may y'all get her book. It was just absolutely beautiful. So if you saw that, I'm just telling you. Absolutely wonderful class she shared. In that particular class, we we went over three different ways you can publish a book. Um, Kindle publishing, I, that's how I did mine. Private publisher, that's how um, uh, Wesley Roderick had done his. And then Dawn Brown, she did, used um, Book Baby? Baby Book? Book Baby? Anyway, so there are different ways and different prices for the way you do it. Okay, um, and there's different advantages depending on what God wants you to publish it for, why you would go a different route. You know, uh, I did workbooks, so I, you know, I just needed them printed. Somebody print that thing. Give me an ISBN and print the thing. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but if you, if it's your story, then you might want to go one of these two routes because it just, it's bit be- I'm not going to say it's better. I'm just going to say there are different routes and they can lead to different purposes and help get whatever the goal. Your goal for publishing a book may be different than the goal I would have in publishing a book. So, it was really a good class. Oh, thank you, Bridget. But you can either go to the Emergence University page. Um, you're welcome to like it. <laughs> And scroll down and look at some of the material or um, private message me. And I can shoot that to you in the messenger. Um, oh, follow me on YouTube and my new Twitter. Uh, well, no, Twitter. I am on Twitter, but uh, it's the new Instagram account. And I've got to upload. Um, I still have to upload. I haven't done it. I have that link, you know, that email you a link of all your backup stuff from your other account or whatnot. Um so whether I choose to upload that or not, I don't know yet. But anyway, um, to restore stuff for the Instagram. It was hacked. Uh, this is the third account in a year. Um, so anyway. And yes, it had the double authentication and all that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway. You know how that kind of stuff is. But it is up and running and it is back on track. And... Um, now we have special things that generate stuff to where it's supposedly unhackable. So, praise the Lord. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> oh, the unhackable part. We know what praise the Lord means. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Follow me on YouTube. YouTube. You can watch any of these videos on YouTube as you go about your day, too. And if I get a 1,000 followers, I can go live on YouTube right now. I can only go live if it's on my computer with the webcam makes it a pain. It would be really nice to be on my phone and go, hey, let's jump on YouTube. So please go to YouTube and like my YouTube channel. Please. <laughs> I got pouty there for a second. Please. Okay. So uh, let's look back up here. How do we get off onto this? Y'all, I'm supposed to be praying for prayer requests. I don't know how I got off onto that. I apologize. Yeah, we just say Cynthia right now for your real estate school. That uh, you have divine favor right now. Financial breakthrough even. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let that job promotion. Okay, everybody's putting jobs on here. Good morning, Millie. Hey there. Um, applying for that job promotion, prayers, immediate supervision. Immediate supervisor would be supportive. That the, oh, Okay, yes. Uh, right now, we just say, you already walk in favor, Bridget, but let it manifest right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You can also go to the website, tiffanyblackwell.com, floor, forward slash resources. Every day, more and more of the website is being built. But right now, the very first page, if you just go to tiffanyblackwell.com, the first page, if you click stuff, it says link broken, not doesn't go anywhere. Just ignore that part, but go to resources. You can either click the thing at the top, make the menu come down and click resources and some of the other pages, you can go to them. Um, or you can type in tiffanyblackwell.com forward slash resources and you can check that out. Um, we ask everyone who can to uh, sow a donation, the amounts that are recommended on there, and there's a payment plan. Um, and for those who need scholarship, contact me and um, I can explain that to you. Okay? We ask those, and I can just explain it right now. We ask those who are scholarshiped, who meet that requirement, to sow their best seed. So whether it is $2 or $200, you know what I'm saying? Whatever their best seed is, for them to sow that with their information in the notes, whether it was PayPal or Cash App or however they did that, um, to where we have them registered and they can be added to a class. And then there's a link you can click depending on the classes that I'll send you. And it will automatically, you'll be inviting yourself to the class. You won't be added till September 8th. September 8th, the week of September 8th. And that little information I send you also lets you know what time the classes are depending on your class. You get to pick one of the levels. Um, and that kind of thing. So who else has a prayer request? Fulfillment of the marriage call. Amen. Amen, Rachel. Right now, we just speak forth that people who need a spouse, and it's not necessarily a need, but it is in one respect, on purpose. God calls the kingdom to be built with families. And he's literally, he causes, um, I hear water running right now. I'm seeing the bride walking with the groom beside the still waters, and I see them kissing out in the harvest field. And so, literally, the Lord had them, according to Malachi, he had them become one so that they could produce godly offspring. And so, in this season, the Lord, for, if you're wanting a spouse... And you may think it's a need. Not Don't ever look at that as a financial need or something. That's not why there is a need for a spouse, for anyone. The reason that God has for us to need a spouse is to advance the kingdom of God. He is looking for godly offspring. And that's natural godly offspring. Come on. But also spiritual offspring. Come on. And by that, that means people are going to connect spiritually one with another. People are going to find coverings. People are going to find um, kingdom connections. So this spiritual, uh, what I'm seeing, um, the marriage, it is natural marriages, but also of a spiritual nature. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. And you know what? We pray then for those marriages, Samantha. We're praying for that, that there be unity, that there be no division, that there be... A conquering of the flesh. I just want to say this. There are a lot. Of people who have struggled in their marriages and stuff. Because many of you can be honest and say. You weren't ever ta taught as a child. When we're supposed to be taught. To take authority over our flesh. Puberty is the time. When we are supposed to be. Um. Developing character. Because of the wild emotions, it causes us, 
It's an opportunity for someone going through puberty to gain authority over their own emotions, to gain authority over the thing so that later in life things go smoothly. But oftentimes you weren't taught that. You weren't taught that that was a way to uh, build character, that the reason some of this came at you as, you know, the wild uh, hormones, and it, yes, it causes your body to grow up and to and to do different things, but it's also an opportunity to surrender the flesh, to crucify it, to, and those who have crucified their flesh at a young age when they do marry, marriage, again, is iron sharpening iron, both parties then can do what? They will yield to one another in a back and forth manner. But if neither party or only one has crucified the flesh, it's, and that's why we're seeing a lot of divorce. And um, sin can be related to that as well. So, You know, Rachel, it can be hard. I'm not going to lie. It can be hard. But um, when we do relationships, that's one of the things in the relationship course that we talk about is um, you don't have to be right. You may be right, but you don't have to prove you're right. If you were going out with your spouse, I use this example all the time, and maybe um, we're going to use the man and the woman, but it could be reversed. Either way, please don't think I'm hating on men. But suppose the man says, let's go to Outback. Okay. And you're the wife, and he says, let's go to Outback. And you get in the car, and he, he drives somewhere, and you go, oh, baby, um, you want me to Google that? You want me to map quest that? Because it's on 4th and Main. And he goes, no, it's not. It's over here on 8th Street. Will you get there and Outback in there? And you can pitch a hissy because he suddenly says, oh, they must have torn it down. Or, oh, look, it's a bank now. They made it into a bank. And you go, you're like, well, you can go, well, baby, it's on such and such a street. I'm not saying keep your mouth shut. But then if he goes, no, it's not, it's that. Let him have his argument. Let him quote win it because you know the truth. At some point, y'all are going to drive by 4th and Main and you can go, oh, baby, look, it's the outback that you thought they tore down. Oh, look, it's the Outback. And you can leave out the part where you go that you thought was the bank. You know what I'm saying, okay? Because you don't have to win the argument. You can just go eat somewhere else that day and be at peace and still have a good meal. And that can be the hard part, but just doing it. I know, I love Outback too. Somebody take me to the Outback. I mean, Australia and the restaurant. Come on, I want to do both. So prayers for a godly wife for your son. Amen, Cynthia. We're agreeing with that right now that your uh, son has that godly wife and a mother for the four-year-old daughter. Amen, in Jesus' name. And we just pray right now that Haley will bond with whoever that woman is. And that woman will love her just as if she's her own child. Vincent, we are just praying right now that you are not, you don't have a cold, that um, any and all symptoms from any type of colds are right now removed from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Ra Raquel, we're just agreeing with you right now that um, any birthing pains are actually lining things up. We command everything in your life to line up, shift now, shift in the name of Jesus. I see an alignment, and I see that road growing stronger and straighter. Oh, this tea is so good this morning. It's absolutely lovely. Moving confirmation, Serge. We just pray for that right now in the mighty name of Jesus for confirmation. Kimberly, we take authority over allergies and command it to submit to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And, um... With regards to that moving, there are so many people moving in the body of Christ. It's not funny. I I would dare to wager at this point. It it would. I almost feel like two thirds to three fourths of my friends are moving. Is that not crazy? So don't be shocked if God gives you that immediate confirmation. So whether you're thinking on the city name, and you go, is it supposed to be this place, Lord? Next thing you know, everybody you meets from that city. That would be ca called confirmation. You, you pray for the Lord to give you confirmation about a state. Next thing you know, you're passing every billboard and it's talking about that state or the sports team from that state. And you're like, 
What is going on? That's confirmation from the Lord. Or somebody walks up to you and you start having a conversation and all they start talking about is that region, that place, that whatever. That would be confirmation from the Lord. Sometimes God will walk up to you and say, move to Catalina. Other times, again, he'll work that way where he works through signs where he'll show himself what he wants you to do based on. Now, for me, um, there have been times where God will tell me a thing, and I said, Lord, if that's your voice, because I want to make sure I don't derail my life. Come on. I say, well, Lord, if that's your voice, I need confirmation on that. And then the very next day, I talk to three or five people that have to do with that situation, and it's all related to the thing I asked him about, and I'm like, that lets me know that's his voice. Pick up the pace. Go that way. <sighs> So I love that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So God's going to show you. And sometimes we'll have a dream. Come on, amen, spread the love, Rico. Sometimes we'll have a dream about what God is talking to us about or a vision. Gary says he's ready for level five. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And um, many of y'all, I just appreciate y'all's support. I appreciate... Um, Y'all going through the university, loving that, and um, if you want a t-shirt, I don't have the t-shirts, but I can put you in contact with the uh, woman who made this one for me to where you could get your very own t-shirt. Um, so, I have, an, I have a lot going on. T-shirts is not something that I can add to the list right now. Unless <laughs> the Lord asks me to. You know how that is. He will put stuff on your plate and you're like, Lord, now i got to move everything else over <laughs> and add that in. <laughs> he is so beautiful. He's so wonderful. Well, I'm going to hop off of here. It was short today. Um, and I love y'all. I love you. I love you. I love you. I circled where we were. Let me make sure that I'm telling you the truth. Yes, we're in Revelation 2 verse 8. We'll start back there tomorrow talking about the angel of the church Smyrna. And see what we may have in common with all that. <laughs> see what else we might be doing that might be a little on the sinful side. And it's not that we always have to do self-examination all the time. But it's okay if, you know, we're reading his word and God highlights something. Or it can be, we can be reading his word and he highlights us something. Um, that's a little bit different than sin. Just getting close to him. Fostering that relationship with him. Pam says she thinks she's ready for level four. Now, level four, I will tell you, my students all said, most all of them, I only had one that said, you could have had more in it. I'd say half to three-fourths of them were like, that's a lot. That's a lot. Well, we discuss a lot. But the whole point of that class, to sum it all up with, and you might think, why didn't you put it at the beginning? It Well, God's... Um, I got to hop off of here. One of my appointments is calling, so I got to call him right back. Uh, but with any type of demonology, anything, the main focus has to be God in Father's heart. Worship, worship, worship. All those things about demons, yes, it exists, and they're there. That can't be our focus. So it's good to be educated about it and then move on. You know? So love you guys. Got to run. And I will talk with you later. Mwah! Private message me if you want to preview those two classes today. Uh or anything else to join the university, etc., or scholarships. See ya!